Welcome back to the Game Show Global Esports Cup on Game Show underscore D2EN with game number two between CIS Rejects and Scary Faces. Game number one looking really solid for SFZ. In general, once they got control, it was so hard for CIS Rejects to do anything on the map as they were just strangled. And a lot of that was down to the performance of the Beastmaster, Axemon Night Hero. Last game, it was an absolute monster. Once he got like the Blink Dagger Necro Book 3, we saw him get a solo kill on the enemy's safe lane farming gyrocopter. And the roar is, although a lot of people might say that it was a little bit too much to roar the Winter Wyvern every fight, made it to where CIS Rejects could not really take those engagements. The Winter's Curse was so crucial for them, and we never really saw a very important one because they focused down that poor hero every single time. I really like that they go for it again, although they aren't going to be able to partner up with the Slaughter, who was the secondary initiator for CIS Rejects, um, or rather for Scary Faces in game number one. CIS Rejects have banded out, and already we're seeing a change of pace with these first couple of picks, as Night Stalker has been let through and is the first selection for CISR. For the Rejects, the Night Stalker is a great way to start their draft. It gives you a similar amount of vision control to the Beastmaster once you get that Aghanim Scepter up and running, and maybe even a bit better. Gem is going to be very important for both of these teams. If they ever get ahead and feel comfortable enough to go for that gem, denying away vision is one of the best ways to secure your advantage and make it impossible for the enemy to make safe moves. Every time they leave their base, they're taking a risk. And then you have to. You, you can't just stay inside your base and let the enemy team farm up the entire map. You need to stop something about it. But if you don't know exactly where the enemy team is, you don't know if what you're doing is going to get you all killed or not. Which is terrifying. Now the Dazzle afterwards is going to make it a little bit harder for Scary Faces to kill everything. In general, a very solid defensive support comboed with the Night Stalker. Can't allow the Night Stalker to just go super deep for his dives. In general, just his standalone heroes are very good. But again, we're seeing a draft where Scary Faces are getting a lot of physical damage on the board early with these first two picks. As the next couple bands will come out, Templar Assassin banned out by Scary Faces and Tusk banned out by CAS Rejects pretty quickly too. No big surprises from either of those bands, even though Tusk was not a member of the winning team. There were quite a few good snowballs and initiations from Gold Black. It's just so very difficult to jump into the enemy team when they're all so clumped up and when they're moving around as a unit. Tusk would much rather find and isolate a single hero, keep them in the ice shards for Salas to do the damage. And we saw that combo early for CIS Rejects in the first game. And that's one of the reasons why it's banned out, just having that support, utility, hero. That's able to do so much with very little. As Ancient Apparition is banned by CIS Rejects, I wonder how Scary Faces are going to approach this. Do they ban out the Huskar? Do they ban out the Alchemist? Do they ban out the Necrophos? All three of those heroes would have been reasonable picks for CIS Rejects, depending on what this third is for Scary Faces. And Scary Faces really just don't want to deal with the Huskar. Another pick that, for the most part in this series, has been ignored is the Broodmother. Maybe CIS Rejects want to pick it up. We'll see. I do like the fact that CIS Rejects are going to go for a little bit more aggressive fighting style in their draft, at least with this Night Stalker Dazzle first two picks, rather than the more farming style we saw from the Shadow Fiend and Gyrocopter. It worked up until the point where Scary Faces had the edge with the initiations, and where the farm on the Shadow Fiend Jaro didn't mean that much. And I'd rather see CIS Rejects just uh, find picks for the upcoming Brawl Fest that will be the early game between these two teams. Maybe that changes, maybe they'll play things a little bit more passively this time around, but in game number one, at 15 minutes in, we had like two kills a minute, it was crazy. Taking a lot of the reserve time, this is usually the part in the draft where everything kind of slows down a bit. And Scary Faces consider what they need. And I think one of the things that they're going to want, if Alchemist or Necrophos come out for CIS Rejects, the heroes that are very heavily countered by the Ancient Apparition, is a good amount of burst damage in lane control. Lich is going to offer the lane control and a moderate amount of burst. In and of itself, it's not enough, but a Lich Beastmaster dual lane offlane is very potent and offers more armor into the mix for Scary Faces. Hmm, feels like their draft is starting to mesh together quite a bit. The amount of pressure they're going to be able to apply is huge. Now, another one of those heroes that I was 
going to suggest that CIS rejects might be angling towards with this ancient apparition pick is or ancient apparition ban is the Slark, but it could be none of the above. Maybe it's just an ancient apparition ban to force out the Huskar ban by scary faces, or in general just make scary faces think that they're going for a mass sustain lineup with the dazzle plus a couple of um, extra heals thrown in here and there from another hero or so. But I think this Lich pick is just really open-ended and isn't going to leave CIS Rejects too much to go off of. The only thing it really says is that Scary Faces want good lanes. Doesn't every team? Even just sitting mid early, denying a couple of creeps for the Shadow Fiend could be very useful. As CIS Rejects pick up the IO. Ooh, maybe that's where that Ancient Apparition band comes into play. I like it. CIS Rejects have a lot of potential to, again, get control on the map, and if they're able to get ahead, are very terrifying. But playing from behind, CIS Rejects heroes might do next to nothing. A Night Stalker that's on the back foot and isn't able to roam around and look for kills is pretty useless. And IO2, if you're not able to go aggressive, although, of course, if you're partnering with the Tiny, you do have that foot pushing potential. It's not where IO really shines. Where IO is the best is where you have a lot of vision where you know exactly what's happening on the unit team and you can isolate that single hero blow them up quickly with that relocate gank and then do whatever you like and tiny is going to be the selection for cis rejects for scary faces lich venomancer these lanes coming out from the scary faces are some of the most obnoxious period <laughs> it's just so annoying nobody wants to be against a lich nobody wants to be against a venomancer i don't care if your lane is awesome it just doesn't matter when you have this annoying amount of poke and constant kite. It's going to make it really difficult for CIS Rejects to move around these engagements. The Night Stalker and Tiny both could have major kiting issues in this game. And the Lich Ultimate also is pretty good against the IO Tiny. That said, I think that CIS Rejects are still fine and going for this IO Tiny. If it works, it's going to be amazing. Avalanche toss almost insta-kills on the Lich, Venomancer, and even the Shadow Fiend if he's significantly far enough behind. As the last bands will come in from either side. Witch Doctor the Ban from CIS Rejects, You're expecting the Safe Lane Farming Vino, and the Ember Spirit Ban from Scary Faces. Vengeful Spirit will be the pick for Scary Faces. Now that's interesting. Something we don't see very often, more minus armor to throw in the mix. The Scary Faces have the potential to get the early advantage from lanes and push that so hard. With the Venomance Rewards, the Beastmaster Summons, the Necrobook that will probably be coming out from the Beastmaster. And CIS Rejects just don't have a lot of wave clear and ways to deal with Scary Faces if they get this early advantage inside the lanes. I really like the Scary Faces draft as a whole. CIS Rejects need to outplay and outperform the enemy's side, or else they're just going to be overwhelmed by the amount of pressure that Scary Faces are going to apply. And that said, if Scary Faces fall behind, a similar situation could arise for them, and even though their five man group up and push is terrifying their wave clear also isn't that great against a broodmother and they're also lacking a good amount of catch vengeful spirits yell as well as the beastmasters hawk can get vision on the broodmother with the blink dagger on the beastmaster they can't catch her out but it is going to cost them a lot of commitment cis rejects have a team that wants to split up the map make scary faces focus on too many different facets of the game to where they can't get to that point where they're just able to mow down a lane and take CIS Rejects at face value. In a 5 versus 5 fight, Scary Faces have a pretty good advantage if they do well in their lanes. But CIS Rejects never want that to be a 5 versus 5 engagement. They want it to be small pickoffs here and there, making space to the Broodmothers. So they have to react to the IO Tiny on another side of the map. It's going to be a game of keep away. And I think CIS Rejects, it's not something that anybody wants to play against. Both of these teams have very different ideas in their draft. And they counter each other in different situations. It really depends on who gets ahead. And we'll have to see what's going to happen with these lanes as we introduce our teams. General is going to be playing on the Shadow Fiend. RMN on the Venomancer. Thanks for changing your unofficial name. Axmo is going to make a return on the Beastmaster. We'll have Art Style on the Vengeful Spirit and Shadowy on the Lich. For CIS Rejects on the Dire side, no doom please. Afterlife, I think, on the Night Stalker. Kent on the Io. Iceberg on the Tiny. They should be the duo for quite a lot of us. Is Goldblack going to be handling the Dazzle and Offlane Broodmother by Ramsey666, the former player for Scary Faces? What is that brood set? Now that's just nasty. <laughs> oh my goodness.
I didn't know you could make Brood any more terrifying, but apparently I've been proven wrong. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Everybody else is going to load out to their lanes. Looks like CS Rejects want to contest this top rune area, but uh, it's going to be spotted out by this hawk. Not an incredibly impressive amount of vision offered by this hawk, but enough. Enough for the Beastmaster. Looks like it's just going to be a bounty for bounty split, as is normal. Are right, these lanes going to work out? Venomancer versus Brood. Can't say it's an incredibly good matchup for either of them. Until Broodmother gets higher levels. RMN not going to have a lot of ways to deal with those spiders. If they get on top of them, the Venomancer can be very squishy. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if they're prepared for this Broodmother. One of the big X factors in CIS Rejects draft. And something that's not very commonly seen since it's usually banned so early. But there were too many annoying heroes for Scary Faces to ban. If they don't ban that Huskar, we probably have a completely different draft for CIS Rejects down the line where they build around that hero. Jedifin going to swagger his way towards the middle lane. Partnered up with the Lich against the Io Tiny dual lane. Let's Shadowfiend should be able to have a pretty good time against Iceberg as well as Kant's dual lane. Although for now the Shadowfiend isn't getting that much farm. The constant denies away from the Io Tiny is going to be a nuisance. And Tiny can't really be left alone comfortably against General with the range advantage. Just a raw amount of physical damage. Not that the Io or the Tiny can really take this comfortably. Just a little bit of poke here and there. Good news is Io has the bottle, even without getting the bounty rune. I don't think that was given towards the Io. Instead, they actually give it to Iceberg himself. Fair enough, doesn't delay it too much at all. But now as we take a look at these side lanes. Sentry Dominance is going to be held by the Broodmother, at least for now, but a secondary Sentry... Ha, oh, they both get destroyed. <laughs> well, nobody has Sentries, and that favors the Broodmother. Oh, first spot on the Shadow Fiend. They're going to toss him back under a tower. Sorry for missing that one, guys. Just gashing it out of nowhere. Way too late on the uptake there. Nicely done, Iceberg. Shadowfiend really shouldn't be in a situation where he gets that close to the Tiny. They're trying to get a little too over-aggressive, and he's going to get caught out. There's nothing Lich can do if the Shadowfiend gets tower-tossed. Nice play coming out from CIS Reject, so that's going to help them out a lot in this lane. That, As I said, they might struggle in. But now after just one kill, and after getting first blood for their Tiny, they are happy to go. The eye is going to disconnect, and it looks like Ramsey's had a bit of a misclick issue here. As we're going to be paused for a little bit, and this will give us some time to look at the top lane. Both of these offlaners are getting reasonable experience, but the Broodmother a little bit more, especially because those sentries have been denied. Ramsey's is going to have a good time, and with that first blood, CIA's rejects are doing a lot better in this early game than I thought they would. Man, I really wish we could rewind and see what happened in mid. I can only imagine it was the tower toss based on where the Chedefine died. Iceberg was able to follow up with the avalanche and just way too much damage onto the SF. Even though it's not your traditional tiny combo, whatever works. And with the IO tiny, it's one of the scariest parts about this lane. In general, just didn't respect it quite enough. The Venomancer is still getting a lot of CS down this bottom lane, though. I don't think much, if any, of that is from spiders. Just a free farm Venomancer. The Broodmother can't stop his farm yet. Emphasis on yet. Once the Broodmother gets to about level 5 or so, 3 points in those spawned spiderlings, or at the very least 2 points in the spawned spiderlings, and you start making quite an army. But even without that, with just a level 1, constantly denying a couple creeps here and there, is going to give the Broodmother a reasonable advantage. Compared to the Beastmaster, at least. The Broodmother is just able to sit in this lane without much threat of actually dying. Broodmother against the dual lane, about the perfect scenario for that brood. It's actually a safe lane farming Night Stalker. Pretty interesting coming out from CIS Rejects. This is going to give a lot of farm for Afterlife. To be able to secure that Aghanim Scepter, not something you're probably ever going to see again is safe lane farming NS, but ah, this is going to be a very, very fast Midas if he wants to go for it, or just get aggressive on the map in general. He's going to be able to do a lot, I'd expect. Maybe even that first night time, they're going to get a stun into Ramses. Here comes the Io, though. The Vengeful Spirit getting mowed down. Nice rotation in from Kent. Now they're going to look for the Venomancer. All right, man, bit of trouble here. Gets slowed down by the spiders. More Wisp Balls. Double kill for Kent. Nicely done. Io is not the first hero that comes to mind when you look for rotations. Then again, neither is the Broodmother. But when you put them together, the amount of damage they can pump out is deceptive, especially when there's no real defensive play outside of stun and run for Scary Faces. Now Ramses is a, a very happy brood, in fact. The sentry in lane, placed down by the radiant side, is going to make her a little bit less happy. 
but still happy enough. They'll kill a couple of these spiders off. Not all of them, though. Oh, mid lane. Avalanche going to buy Iceberg a little bit of space. That rotation from the Beastmaster is going to be unsuccessful. Now Iceberg can uh, look to keep on farming in this lane. The biggest issue for Scary Faces is their lack of initiation until this Beastmaster gets 6. And even then, maybe they'll need something more than that. I think Blink Dagger Rush might be the build for the Beastmaster this game. Although, you can never knock Necrobook. It's so good. I think they just need a way to get the jump on the CIS Rejects. Or this is going to keep on happening where CIS Rejects are able to respond. And even with that roar, it's on 100% kill. Gale's going to be thrown in bottom, being maxed by RM men with the dust as well as a stun. Maybe he can kill off Ramses, but again, the Io's going to come around the corner. Healing up this Broodmother a little bit. The Wisp Balls into the Vengeful Spirit. They're going to eject the spiders into her. RM men's getting swarmed. And another double kill in bottom lane, this time for Ramses. Broodmother Io, who'd have thunk it? Working out really well for CIS Rejects. I like the Scary Faces draft, but these lanes are just not working out as well as one would have thought. Especially that first blood on the Tiny really catching him off guard. And CIS Rejects are just playing well in general against Scary Faces. By no means is this over. Don't, don't get me wrong. 5-0 is a great start for CIS Rejects, but it's not the end of the world. It is about a 3,500 net worth advantage and 3,000 experience advantage for CIS Rejects. But once they get the level 6 on the Beastmaster, they do have abilities that can allow them to capitalize on that war and start grouping up. But this is not going to be that scary... Oh, no. Broodmother gets another kill. Diving under the tower. Armand also. Oh, no. Not like this. Venomancer. Gonna get another double kill for this Broodmother. They're getting a lot of damage in the Iceberg with a couple of raises connecting. But uh, this Brood just cannot be stopped. She has almost 2,000 gold. This is going to be... A five and a half minute Midas Soul Ring on an offlane brood and a tier one tower falling at five minutes into. Oh, that's disgusting. Actually, it's not going to be a Midas at all. Ramses wants the Orchid, and this is going to be an absurdly fast Orchid Malevolence. When you get that item so quickly, it's terrifying. Nobody on Scary Faces can come down to the bottom lane. This, this part of the map, even though my drawing on the map is all messed up, I'm not sure why that hasn't been fixed yet. The Broodmother owns it. This is her her zone. And I don't think Scary Faces can actually remove her. Or do anything about the Tiny either. He's just going to keep on farming. One kill to his name. Iceberg isn't like the most farmed Tiny you're ever going to see. But he's still getting a lot. And Scary Faces just aren't getting any momentum going their way. A lot rests on General Shadowfiend and what he's going to be able to do with this farm that he's getting. Iceberg's going for the dive. Here comes almost the entire Radiant team. But then again, here comes the Night Stalker. Mega kill for Ramses as he munches down another. Gant's going to take a couple of tower shots. But with another injection, double kill for Ramses. And they don't even kill off the Tiny with Shallow Grave. He's going to live. They continue the dive. Toss in a creep. Exmo as well as Art Sal are dropping. What a commanding early game coming up from CIS. Rejects 12-0. to zero. Do you just tap out? I don't think so. But maybe then again you do. This is a lot more convincing than I thought it would be. Scary Faces, I like the idea in their draft. I really do, but it doesn't work if you get this massively outplayed in the early game. And just with a little bit of momentum, CIS Rejects are taking that a long way. A lot of this comes down to the fact that they just don't have answers to the Broodmother, who's going to have one of, if not the fastest Orchid I've ever seen. She's going to get stomped by these creeps and feed a lot of Spires of the Shadow Fiend. Uh, just like that, Shadow Fiend is now... <laughs> Top of the last hit chart. But. Yeah, my goodness. 12 to 0. Scary faces need to get on the board. They need to do something. They cannot sit back and let CIS rejects maintain map control. Oh, it's so hard though. They're cha or charging under where the tier 1 tower once stood. They get the balls to connect onto the Shadow Fiend. They catch eyes on the general chasing forward. This tiny is moving in like a bullet train. Avalanche is going to connect with the Gale. Maybe they're able to disengage on the meantime. In the back lines, the Vengeful Spirit and the Lich are going down to the Night Stalker and the Brood. Oh no, wicked sick for this Brood Mother. 2200 gold on top of the first Obliv staff as now they chase forward for Axmo. They'll turn for a couple of raises maybe, but Iceberg's so tanky. Even without having bottle charges on this Io, how do you kill him? Oh my... They'll kill the Hawk. And Scary Faces have no vision on this map. They must be terrified. At least in this game, of course. You can't go anywhere. There's spiders, there's night stalkers, there's giant rock men that will solo kill you, and even the supports are getting a lot. Again, this this broodmother owns everything her webs touch. 
and and even some things that are webs don't touch. There is a web here, I think, according to the map, but I can't see it because, again, that's another really annoying Broodmother bug that hasn't been messed with. But we're going to have a sub-10 minute Orchid if Broodmother wants to pick that up. And then again, I mean, Ramsey's, if you want to just pick up a Midas, go ahead. But uh, yeah, that's that's the Orchid done. Eight and a half minutes in the game. It's not going to be flown out probably until about nine. Still, that's gross. Nobody can come into Broodmother's Woods. Even with everybody. They don't have Roar yet for this Beastmaster Expo. It's level, it's level 5, 9 minutes into the game. I'm really finding it difficult to look for an angle to get Scary Faces back in to where they can tap into the potential of their heroes when they're grouped up. Also, the Venomancer's gone for a very aggressive build that I think he kind of needed to go against the Broodmother, but the split push potential coming up from Scary Faces isn't much at all. Oh no! Relocate top. Artman's gonna go down. Killing spree for this Wisp. And just like that, Kent has, like, 1,400 gold. That's that's not pretty. Oh, Broodmother. Looking to kill off Axe That heal bomb injection. It's not going to be lethal. The soul burn is just going to drop Beastmaster down to 100 HP. He's fine, guys. He's, he's fine. But CIS rejects just can't be stopped. They really can't. And speaking of Kent, he's going to have a Glimmer Cape soon, too. This is CIS Reject's game to lose, not Scary Face's game to win. They have the war, though. They have level 6 on Axmo. Maybe with it, if they group up as their entire team, they might be able to kill off one of these heroes. But probably not Ramses. And probably not anything that's going to allow them to remove the Broodmother from the jungle, force them away off of their map. There's just no place for Scary Faces to farm. The only farm they're going to get is stuff that's coming to their Tier 2 tower. This is Broodmother's jungle. This is Tiny's jungle. This is CIS Rejects map. This. This area. And Scary Faces do own a little bit of their lane farm, but... Oh, it looks like Broodmother might be able to kill off Axmo if he's not careful. The Brood has maintained vision control across the map, and Scary Faces have to group up. Although at 10 minutes in, you'd probably expect Scary Faces draft to be comfortable grouping. Not when they do this poorly in the lanes. There just wasn't ever an opportunity for them when this brood mother is 7-0-2. Has gotten three double kills this game? That sounds about right. And now he's gonna go into the Roshan pit. This isn't the most reliable Roshan coming out from the brood mother. I think it still can be done though. How many points in cap bite do you have? Only one. Well, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult as the claps are going to clear out the spiders. But you know what? Can Sp Scary Faces punish it? I don't think so. They'll get a tier 1 tower top. This is something that Scary Faces is gonna be happy about. And it's impressive that the Shenafine has this much farm based on how far their team is behind. We've been seeing about this 10,000 lead for CIS Rejects for quite a while. But 10,000, 11 minutes into the game is ridiculous. Now at the heal bomb, they'll lob up Roshan, finish it up, give the Aegis a tiny, and Night Stalker is gonna pick up his 11 minute Midas. Scary faces again are just waiting for CIS rejects to get out of position. The Lich pick is not working. You, you select Lich to lock down your lanes, to make sure that your lanes go well, to make sure that your heroes have an experience advantage. But that's not what's happened this game. What's happened this game is spiders. Spiders have happened, and Night Stalkers have happened. And Io has been rotating around and getting kills left, right, and center. CIS rejects are free to show off at this point. Don't get cocky, though. That's probably the only way you lose this game. But they have stalled out. This is good news for Scary Faces. They've slowed down the bleeding. Not stopped it entirely, but they've slowed it down. They patched up the wound. And granted, it is a huge, gaping wound in their side. But maybe if they're able to start catching CIS rejects off as they go a little too aggressively, they'll be able to do this. But that relies on them being able to see CIS rejects. They have a hawk. They don't have a ward, they have a hawk, that's about it. And a couple of venomous wards, I suppose. And maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to kill off Ramses? Broodmother isn't all that tanky if they get on top of him, but oh! Tiny! Avalanche, toss, general, is gonna get swapped away, the spawn spiderlings still connect, they'll stun up the tiny, and they have sha uh, shaved Shadowfiend, yeah, that's exactly what I meant to say. Now, Iceberg is really deep, he has the Aegis, might be forced to spend that now, the right-click damage in Iceberg? Are you gonna fall? It looks like he will. Aegis Immortal is going to be proc you need to give this guy a lot of space, and you also need to give the Venomancer some sort of help, he's left alone, so they'll still get a kill, 16-0. to zero. But getting the Aegis there for Scary Faces is a win in and of itself, they'll still lose this Tier 2 tower, but that was inevitable, I want to say. 
They're losing map control, but at the very least, they have a chance if Iceberg does something like that again. What you gonna do? Jennifine has an Ogre Club. I don't think it really matters what he builds out of this Ogre Club. He probably needs the BKB, but going for the BKB isn't going to do that much. His Broodmother's just buying the wards for the team, so the supports can get their items up and running. Fair enough. This Broodmother's so far ahead that she can buy whatever she wants. I wouldn't be opposed to a dagger. It's going to be phase boots for her and another 1100 gold on top. Shedifine's around the corner, though. Maybe he's able to... Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to get silenced up. The Broodmother's right on top of him. They have a Night Stalker around. That's a dead general. Lich Ultimate's going to bounce mostly to the Spiders. Gets a little bit of farm for the Lich. Hey, that's something. But that's a monster kill for this Broodmother. And she's warding for herself. This is such a self-sufficient brood. Oh no, the Orchid Tick! That's a dead vengeful spirit with just a little bit more vision. They didn't even have the Ags yet, but they're just overrunning the enemy's side. And they'll toss in the Night Stalker. Our men will fall. This is going from bad to worse for scary faces. Casually, they'll run Night Stalker past that tier 2 tower and we'll be just fine as Shedifine disconnects. Are they going to wait for him? Are they going to call GG? GG? Wow. That was impressive. CIS rejects. Never at any point inside this game was it even close. Game number one was such a brawl fest. Both of these teams were going very evenly against each other, but game number two, CIS rejects. Put the foot down. Ban the brood. Ban the IO. Don't let them get it. CIS rejects looking strong. Moving on to game number three. Whoever wins that will move on to play against Empire tomorrow to decide who moves on from the CIS region into the further stages of this tournament. And whoever loses this last game is going to be out and eliminated. Scary Faces and CIS Rejects are going to be fighting for their tournament lives. Coming up next here on the same channel. My goodness, just <laughs> let that sink in. Game number two, I'm so surprised it's over. See you later, guys. I've been Grandis V. We'll be back in just a minute.